Good morning, everybody. So my name is Kun van Benschop. I'm very happy to be here today and basically go a little bit back to where can we immediately go forward on, on tackling latency without really having to dive in to, let's say, larger integration efforts um, doing a larger swap towards the SEMA format, which I feel is the future. So we've been spending quite some time and effort uh, to figure out like where do we stand today and what I have for you is basically a way of looking at things. So I've basically just projected this timeline which um, is different in every organization or every play out kind of a service you have. Uh, sorry for the move in the characters, I was not aware this was happening. But this is like a standard line, which is probably recognizable for most people in here who actually do live streaming. And if you take the entire chain, you actually see that 36 to 42 seconds is what a year ago was absolutely utterly normal. Hardly anybody was really a lot faster than that. And if you look at where does the latency come from, um, there is a lot of different hops in this entire chain. And if you go in even deeper into the technology actually used and involved, you will actually see that each segment divides into more segments and, and more little latencies. And at the end of the day, all your latencies end up in being roughly 40 seconds. Now, these 40 seconds for, let's say, um, fiction kind of content, they don't really have much of a relevance. But there is a lot of relevance, especially when you go to live sports or even uh, to stuff like betting online and stuff like that. So what we have been doing, and this is where I want to take you to this little journey, is basically um, we've been looking at where does it really, really start being timely. So here you can see that we have reduced the player buffer to six to eight seconds. Initially, we had roughly 18 to 24 seconds if you assume a segment size of six seconds, which is fairly normal today. When the initial, let's say, live streaming came up, segment sizes were even larger and you were looking at well over 30 seconds of latency just on the player side. So basically your player holds up to 30 seconds of video without actually outputting it. So the player is playing a very large role. And you can, of course, go into the code of the actual player and try to trick that. But that's very tedious and uh, will require a lot of effort. And we're looking at an easy kind of a solution. So what we have actually done, um, it's not live today, but what we have done is we've basically first looked at what happens if I reduce my segment size to two seconds. So if you go to two seconds, um, my player buffer becomes let's say acceptable six to eight seconds because it is still three to four segments that sit inside the player buffer. But also my entire download and publishing um, is already speeded up because basically I have smaller files. We are transferring files, so I transfer smaller files and this just is faster, so you lose less time um, on this step. Um, and if you add all this up, which is, again, a rough estimate. It will depend on whatever devices you are using in this chain. But you're at 16 to 18 seconds. That's not live, that's not near live, but it's already 50% gain over what we had before. And this is just by reducing your segment size to two seconds. Um, it, it works, it's stable, it's not much of a problem at all. But 16 to 18 seconds, I don't think anybody is going to be happy, especially if your super top managers come back from IBC, NAB or whatever, and tell you, well, we saw somebody doing live glass to glass in 2.1 seconds. And this is far away from 2.1 seconds. So we took it up one step further. And we looked at what happens if you reduce your segment size to just one second. Now, if you go to less than two second segment size, you would also need to do a little bit inside the encoding because you will need to fit one full frame in this one second. So your GOP structures will probably decrease compared to what you have today. Again, depending on the technology, it doesn't really change very much in terms of video quality. You might want to add two, three percent of additional bandwidth, but on most uh, encoders you see today, 
they can still very well live with one second gob sizes without losing uh, significant video quality. Um, by doing that, you actually come to a point where you can say, well, my encoder might be or will be slightly faster. Packaging, publishing, network, download, this all becomes slightly faster. And I still have four to six seconds inside my player, which keeps your player on the safe side. Um, you will probably not be able to step into an elevator, go up seven floors and still have live streaming because an elevator ride is more than six seconds typically. But you'll be pretty safe when you're moving around the house or have a short time where your reception is not as good as you would want to have it. So then we're at 11 to 13 seconds. Now, 11 to 13 seconds for most content, I think, is very, very viable. It's uh, acceptable. If you're looking sports, your neighbors start shouting, you still have time, 13 seconds, to go to the fridge, grab a beer, come back and see the goal. So it's still not quite where we want to go. So then we said, well, let's just go super crazy. Uh, no, shit, that doesn't work, because then we really need to do additional work. And what I'm trying to point out is basically, if you look at our channel lineup, so we have a total of about 400 channels. We only distribute roughly half of that on the OTT domain. Um, but what is inside those channels? 99% or 95% of these channels are old stuff, you know? They're, they're, they're fiction. It doesn't have any relevance whatsoever how fast it arrives. So if you look at um, things we're often benchmarked by, it's like uh, Euro 2020 uh, football championship. That's usually where the benchmarks are. And I already know who's going to be broadcasting that because it's only going to be two channels on our platform. So rather than rebuilding my entire infrastructure, what we are working on today is fairly simple. We take those two channels, we add another two channels where we think speed is relevant, and we basically say, just on these few channels, we speed it up even further. Now, how can you speed it up even further? Um, the player buffering, I don't really want to touch that. That's, that's a bit of a complex area. It takes a lot of work, effort, and testing. And it's not really uh, easy to do that. But what I can do is basically, I can go into the front of the, of the storyline. So if you compare it to before, a typical encoder will take about three seconds for an encode, depending on what gob size you have and how you set it up. Then you have your packager and then you have your publishing. So encode plus packaging in this here is roughly five seconds. If I now go and say, well, there is enough vendors that will sell you an encoder that can be faster. It's only for four channels, so I can buy the biggest servers available or the fastest uh, encoder available and make sure that my encode and my segmentation is actually happening in the same unit. You can actually steal some time there. Um, it's perfectly possible to have an encode and segmentation in one unit, whatever it is, wherever you get it. And that can be done in two seconds. It's not rocket science, you can just buy that. And if you then say, I do this for four or five channels, the ones which are relevant in, times, in terms of latency, my rest of the chain is still unchanged, so the clients won't really notice that I put a faster encoder in front of it. And if you add all this up, you end up at roughly eight seconds, which is where we wanted to go. Like, can we save a lot of latency, 80% compared to the 40 seconds roughly? Uh, yeah, you can do that in eight seconds. Um, there is a few things you need to look into when you're looking at where does the latency actually uh, start happening. And it will be very different depending on your personal setup as you have today. If you're already quite fast, you can still go faster, but there will be an endpoint. So today, this is what we are working on. Uh, this is what we are looking at. And this is like my personal target for 2020 Euro Football Championship. Uh, I basically want to have these channels at roughly eight second end-to-end -end delay on all platforms. And as this is what we are measured by, People won't even notice that other channels are slightly slower. Um, can you take it beyond that? Well, you can do some tricks. Very simple. I put a satellite dish at the front. Now, if you look at how does the signal arrive at my satellite dish, 
it's a long way. It's, it's up, down, and then the broadcaster will be probably saving a little bit on bandwidth on the satellite distribution. So he's got a complex stat max. So his encode already takes four seconds, including the stat max, roughly. So by doing a direct line to the studio, you actually get four seconds head start compared to satellite distribution. This is one thing you can look at. Or you can even have a CBR um, least line delivery with constant bitrate, which is typically one to two seconds. You can save a lot there as well. So you can speed it up a little bit further. But then you come to the point where basically within what we currently have, without really going deep into the player, without changing a lot of the distribution formats and stuff like that, this is where it ends. It will just not go a lot faster than that. However, if you want to take it faster, there is solutions for that. So we have Stefan Arbanovsky here from Fraunhofer. We work together quite a bit. And they've already been very busy. And Stefan can explain you a lot about what the next step of evolution is. And for you, it is basically up to decide, do I take this intermediate step? Do I go to the future? What's the next level? So Stefan, it's all yours. Thanks for the nice intro. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Th um, thank you for your nice intro. Um, welcome also from my side. Uh, yeah, my name is Stefan Abanowski. I'm with Fraunhofer um, Focus from Berlin. Um, and I'll be working on OTT, let's say technology, streaming, tech, encoding, and things like this. I would say um, like 15 years, and I'm heavily involved in standardization tech. Uh, for instance, in um, making at the end of the day things like Dash and HLS and uh, CMF may be working. Uh, by just looking at the agenda, this might be the, I don't know, um, most technical presentation uh, with a lot of acronyms, uh, so sorry for that already. Uh, but nevertheless, just to hook on what um, Kuhn just said, the next step on our agenda, the next step I see is definitely CMF. What is CMF? Common um, media application format, what does it stand for? And why is it really needed? We have things like HLS, we have things like Dash, so it's working, so eight seconds, just enough. So what the heck? Um, essentially, CMF is the result of Microsoft and Apple teaming together and agreeing on that there should be this package one's promise. So you just want to have one file. So not um, dozens of files for all the different, let's say, play, play out situations for all the different devices. You just want to have one file on the hard disk which you are going to deliver. That's the basic idea. What was the problem there? So HLS was TS, of course, and um, yeah, uh, Dash was using fragmented MP4 uh, files and uh, essentially Apple gave in and saying two years, two and a half years ago, um, saying, okay, we do fragmented MP4 twos. And since, um, I don't know, um, iOS 10.2 or something, they support fragmented MP4 um, playing this out. This was, let, let's, just, let's say, the enabler for CMF. So, and CMF, at the end of the day, so not reading out everything here on that slide, is, that's the main thing here. This is this one um, um, package once promise and it's working for HLS and Dash. So you have one file format and you deliver this either via HLS or Dash. Just to give you a heads up here, there's, I'm talking about um, CMF, but there's CMF2 coming. There's a new version. It's currently, let's say, in the making. Um, and there will be shortly a new version of that. Uh, what is the difference? I'm not diving into the details too much. So CMF was the first, let's say, step an agreement among the industry, so what can be done to, let's say, go for this uh, one file for, for the different um, distribution systems. And it was a lot of compromises, and they were leaving out a lot of stuff. And essentially, there were people saying, okay, we can do everything with Dash, so this is good enough, so let's move for Dash. There's no way for Apple moving to Dash, so for that reason, okay, um, let's go for CMF, we leave a lot of stuff out there, and now in the second version, we are basically adopting things that have been left out uh, for the first version. So, two other things to have in mind. So, as I said, it works for Dash and it works for HLS. Um, 
we still maintain the manifest files. So all the magic you have learned in the past, uh, which you do with, with your manifest files, with the M3UA or the MPDs, you can still do, and there's more to come. Um, as I said before, so everything's based on fragmented MP4, um, and um, it's compatible, backward compatible. So um, a lot of devices already can play CMF, um, uh, CMF files, and it's compatible to things like dvb if and wave profiles. So this is also another good thing. There was a recent, I, yesterday, I just coming back from, uh, from Berlin from the Media Web Symposium, which we had there two, two days, and I was um, listening to a presentation from Will Law from Akama yesterday, and he was t uh, talking about this cricket game. You might have heard about, about that, uh, this 18.6 million concurrents um, in India. Uh, 95% Android, 95% CMF, uh, and um, it was basically playing out to all those devices. So very little iOS devices, one has to say. But on the other hand, there's another, there was another story that 97% um, of the iOS devices can play um, CMF. So this is really backwards compatible, and you can play that out today. So DRM. Um, interesting too, so this is also good news on that front, so because even with Dash, we were already telling, okay, this is just one streaming format, you can put in there, your files there, but at the end of the day, okay, there's DRM, and we have different encoding schemes, and okay, you have to have two files. This is going away too, so for those who know that there are things like uh, Kink and um, CBCS encoding or AES encoding, um, this is all going away. So of course, you have the legacy devices, uh, which you have to support, but for all the new ones, so basically, we are agreeing on CBCS, so this is the no new encoding scheme, and you can assume in the near future that all devices will just support that. This is also backed then by the, uh, by the prominent uh, DRM standards um, or DRM products like Whitebind Fairplay. Um, and on Android, and you can also play the spec. So this is just then, again, only one file left. Good news on the storage cost side. This is another version of your <laughs> nice pictures. So I did the math myself too here. Um, borrowed the slide from, from Will again. Um, just to pick on the same example here. This is this 10 seconds. And the 10 seconds, where does the 10 second segment come from? OK, it's, it's an old rule given by uh, Apple for HLS. So you have to have 10 seconds. And the buffer in the device has to, be, uh, has to store three uh, segments, so that makes 30 seconds, um, basically, you have to store, and 30 seconds, there's no way to go below um, that delay. So if you go down to two seconds, you end up here, if you do the math with the 11, and if you go even below that with the one second second, that pretty much is the number Kern was giving you, 5.5 seconds, which I calculated here um, throughout the delivery chain. So let's see what we can do now. As I, I was just explaining you this scenario here with the 30 seconds. This is the scenario uh, which we just learned that if you go down to two seconds or even one second segments, you might end up in something between four to six seconds buffer, uh, buffering delay. Of course, you have to add uh, the other uh, delays which you saw on the, on the slide before. Uh, but this is roughly the number since this is the biggest impact, which has the biggest impact there. If you want to go below that, there's essentially there's two options. There's on one hand CMF, I will talk about that in a second, and on the other hand, or CMF low latency, and on the other hand, there's WebRTC, not to ignore this one. WebRTC, what is this? WebRTC is a standard that has been heavily pushed by the industry, mainly also. Google, which is used basically in peer -to for peer-to-peer -peer communication in between different devices for video conferences and things like that, and you can go sub-second delay. This is really good news, but on the other hand, it's also um, computing resources needed on both ends. It's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. You have to maintain session information, and uh, from what I've been seeing so far, this is cool technology. This is really for sub-seconds. You use it for, for gambling. You use it for video conferences, but it comes at cost. It's really hard to manage at scale, so there is... Um, um, uh, players out there that, that say uh, CDN providers, they can handle up to 100K, 200K uh, parallel sessions. Let's see if you want to go 
beyond that, it's really, really hard. So if you have just have uh, 20,000 customers, that might be an idea. Uh, if you have more, I would be uh, cautious to pro promote that technology for really doing broadcast-like um, um, uh, services. Okay, CMF, what is that about now? now? What you can see here is CMF segment. This is essentially the same thing like a dash segment, or um, it's just it's a header, and then there's parts in there um, for the different uh, for the different media uh, parts. And you see here, this is 20 samples in one big segment. So what does uh, CMF introduce? CMF introduces a new concept which is called chunks. There was something similar in dash already, uh, but nevertheless, so this is now agreed between HLS and. Um, uh, and dash. So a CMF enables these chunks. What can I do? I can basically split the long segment, this eight uh, segment, eight second segment. I can split it apart in fragments and have here those chunks. What is the beauty of those chunks? I can already play them out during I receiving during I receive them. So remember here this whole video fragment. When I have received here the first. Uh, essentially, the first part here, I can already play that out. I don't have to wait until the end here. And this is essentially the game. Let's see how this really is working out. Um, this is another example with a few numbers. If you can't see them, so I will just let you know. So this is in one segment here, which is eight uh, seconds long. So eight seconds, eight seconds, eight seconds, eight seconds. So, and essentially, this is... I'm creating this or I'm reading this. This doesn't really matter for, for the calculation. So this is the, 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 the sequence, the segments are being generated. So what happens if I'm here with my player and this is exactly the time where I hit play. So now I want to start the, play, the playback. So I have received segment number one, segment number two, and segment number three, but I'm already, from the live edge point of view, I'm already here where I haven't really received segment four, uh, but I have received segment three. So I have basically I have two options. First option is segment number three, I have. I can play that out right now, so there's zero waiting time. I can just start playing. On the other hand, this segment has been received 11 seconds ago. So it's an eight segment second, eight second segment, but 11 seconds ago. So that means there's immediately 11 seconds of um, latency um, added of delay edit. On the other hand, what I can also do, I'm here in the, just in the middle of segment number four. I'm three seconds in there, and I have to wait for another five seconds to receive the rest. So, okay, this is a good idea. Just let, let, uh, wait for another five seconds, and this adds up then in total to just eight seconds latency. This is exactly the scenario uh, what we can achieve with this technology like uh, uh, Kuhn was introducing, so we are ending up here again with this eight-second uh, latency. So what is now CMF low latency using uh, chunks? Essentially, we're doing exactly the same thing as before, but we have smaller segments or chunks now. And um, as you can imagine, it's pretty easy here. I'm here at this third chunk in this segment, and basically there is zero waiting time because I'm just at the point. I can just start playing. So, and there's only this delay because I, I'm still here in second number four. There's this delay of three seconds. Um, that's the waiting time and this is basically the delay I'm adding here. Of course, this comes at cost. Um, and of course, all those numbers are just the general, uh, the general model. Uh, we are talking here about one second, two second, eight seconds, and so on. It's never one second. That's 0 0.96. Since we are talking uh, 24 frames, 50 frames, with, uh, encoding, and, and so on. So um, you have to select those numbers very carefully because it has an impact on the, uh, on the playout. Uh, but nevertheless, you can even go be beyond, uh, below that. So typical, let's say, proof of concept uh, installations uh, trying values like uh, 40 milliseconds. So 40 milliseconds is the minimum. Do the math and you end up, this is exactly one second. So one second playback time is a 40 millisecond uh, chunk. And uh, so it's not three seconds here, it's 40 milliseconds. You can really 
uh, go very, very short. And on the other hand, um, of course, there is um, file size included. If you want to play something right out when you receive it, still we are talking MPEG, so you have to have an iframe. So you have to have a full picture. And if you go, let's say, 40, second, 40 milliseconds, then every segment or every chunk is an iframe. So which, of course, um, adds bandwidth um, or is, a, is resulting in a bigger file. And this is really, you have to try with your content, you have to try this out with, with your entire catalog or uh, with what you are usually to stream, might be sport, might be uh, something different. So this really ha depends then on the content you are going to stream. And this is it.